Well, good morning again, uh, family. Uh, we are back together uh, for Sunday. We are in our series on how to study uh, the actually or actually not in our series on how to study the Bible. We're actually in our series on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit series. I felt um, really uh, God placed it on my heart that um, a very strong word, and it was very simple, uh, but strong, and it hit me and said many people have faith in God and many people have faith in Jesus, but not enough people have faith in the Son and uh, the Holy Spirit. And um, man, it hit me. And uh, we have been on this series learning about the Holy Spirit uh, ever since and uh, the relationship that we have. And so we're going to pick uh, this up um, and right where we left off last week. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. And we're going over to our main text in John chapter 14. It has been our home base. I'm going to read it uh, from another version this morning uh, because we've uh, we uh, we've been reading it from our NASB uh, version. But today I want to go ahead and uh, share it from uh, the Passion Translation. Pastor Roxanne uh, this week uh, had posted a couple of uh, verses that came from the Passion Translation. I just liked uh, how it uh, brought to life some of of uh, these scriptures in the way that it, it, it shared it. And so I just want to give you uh, another another version this morning and we're going to go ahead and pick up. Right here it says, Don't worry or surrender to fear. For you've believed in God. Now trust and believe in me also. I love how it says, Don't worry or surrender to fear. Surrender. Surrendering is an, an act that you have to actually do, an act of your volition. It's something that, that you actually need to, uh, as we've been talking about, let happen, right? Uh, you've seen uh, many of the, the cop TV shows and the different things where they're, they're capturing the crim criminal and they, they, they say surrender, or put your hands up, right? No one can actually put your hands up. No one can actually cause you to uh, to 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 do those things, and it's the same way here. He's saying surrendering, right? That's an act of the will, right? We have the ability, right, to not let fear or our hearts be troubled. And I love what he said: Don't surrender to fear. Don't let fear rule us. Don't let the things that concern us, right? As we've been saying, don't let trouble trouble you. Um, and I just love it right here. He says, for you believed in God, now trust and believe in me also. Okay? Now trust and believe in me also. And you guys know that historical context is what we've been focused on on our Wednesday mornings. And when he says you've believed in God, he's not just saying uh, it randomly. He's saying, look, the way that you have believed in God, you guys have had a relationship with God. There's a way that you've thought about God. But now... Jesus is bringing another revelation of God, a fuller revelation of God, a complete revelation of God. He's bringing on the scene and he's saying, now I need you to trust me. Because many of them, they, they, they struggled with moving forward with what Jesus was bringing. They had a, a, a certain way of thinking and, and living. And us in, in 2020, I'm watching as, as, as essentially the world is changing around us. I'm seeing some people being able to adapt, right? Some people that are being able to flow with what is taking place and other people that, that, that are getting stuck, that they're surrendering to fear, that they're, they're being uh, concerned about tomorrow and what tomorrow brings. But God has called us. He said, look, here's the solution. Receive what my son is doing. Receive what my son is bringing. And Jesus says here, trust in me also believe in me also now i want us to look at verse 15. he says loving me empowers you to obey my commandments loving you empowers you to obey my commandments and i will ask the father and the father he will give you another savior the holy spirit of truth who will be to you a friend just like me and he will never leave you 
The world won't receive him because they can't see him or know him, but you will know him intimately because he makes his home in you and will live inside of you. I promise that I will never leave you helpless or abandon you as orphans. I will come back to you. Soon I will leave this world and they will see me no longer, but you will see me because I will live again and you will come alive too. So when that day comes, you will know that I am living in the Father and that you are one with me, for I will be living in you. Those who truly love me, those who obey my commandments, whoever passionately loves me will be passionately loved by the Father, and I will passionately love you in return and will manifest my life within you. I love how he said, he said, loving me empowers you. In verse 15, loving me empowers you to obey my commandments loving me I, the cool thing about that some people see this and they say if you love God you'll keep his commandments the, the, they'll speak of it as as if it's a uh, a requirement since you love God obey him right they, they make it that type of statement but this is a beautiful way of seeing this because we can see that that it's our love, right? It's our love that allows for us to trust. It's because of love. Um, when my wife says something to me, I can, because of the love that I have for her, I can follow through with whatever she's asking me to do, right? It's the love that actually causes us to to want to listen. It's, it's the love. And so what I love about it is, he said, my love empowers. My love empowers, right? We have the ability to follow the instruction of God. We have the ability to, 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 to roll with his wisdom, um, to trust his, his working and what he's doing. And so one of the main things that the Holy Spirit comes to do is to bear witness of that love. As we've been talking about in this series, that they, they were told to wait in the city, right? We talked about that, to wait. Why are we waiting? Because there's something that we need to have. We need to have the correct identity. We need to have the right revelation of our sonship, of who we are, our love, that the love that God has for us. And so we went over to Matthew 3, and we looked at it, and we're going to go right back over there really quickly and, and take a look at this really quick. Matthew chapter 3. And we're going to look at verse 15. Matthew 3 verse 15 says, Jesus replied, it is only right to do all that God requires. Now, then John will back up to 13. Jesus left Galilee to come to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But when he waited in the water, John resisted him saying, why are you doing this? I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you. And yet you come to be baptized by me. Jesus replied, it is only right to do all that God requires. Then John baptized Jesus, and as Jesus rose up out of the water, the heavenly realm opened up over him, and he saw the Holy Spirit descend out of the heavens and rest upon him in the form of a dove. Then, I, then suddenly the voice of the Father shouted from the sky, saying, This is the Son I love. This is the son I love and my greatest delight is in him. I want you guys to receive that this morning. That God's greatest delight is in us. That God is pleased with us. That's what the ministry of the Holy Spirit does. It brings the voice of affirmation. It brings the voice of love. It brings the voice of you are, you are my righteousness. That you are right with me that you are in right standing that you and me are good that there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God the importance of uh, one of the main things that the Holy Spirit does is he bears witness to that love he bear he testifies of that love he testifies of the sonship and so Jesus right Jesus is about to step into his ministry but before he could do that he had to be empowered he had to be reminded. He had to be equipped to go into that next place. So we talked about it before. There were some people that had were believers and they, they were they were they were Christians, but yet they at the same time they had not heard of the Holy Spirit. And in our series, we have been trying to 
to really uh, really change that because too many believers, too many Christians are not aware of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit has truly come to do, what the Holy Spirit has truly come to really uh, uh, do in our lives and confirm things. Jesus had to wait. And then he tells his disciples, look, I need you before you go. I need you to wait on the promise of the Holy Spirit. He knew. He knew how they would be equipped. He knew how they would how how it would transform and empower and give them authority that that they would not have otherwise. It is their understanding of 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 the sonship and the Holy Spirit bearing witness. You can see a, a shift if you read the book of Acts. You can see how the disciples all of a sudden it's another level. It's another level in which they move and act and authority that they that they flow in. Where does that come from? It comes from their understanding that they are loved by God. Their understanding of the sonship. Their understanding of the authority. Now in Matthew chapter 4 we see something here. And this this uh, this week was a challenging week for our house. A, a very challenging week for our house. Uh, I, I don't remember feeling this way actually at all in our marriage, right? Me and Yvonne are great. We're straight. But we had some external things that were happening on the outside that, that, that were coming our direction. And see, here's the thing. We felt like we were walking in the right direction. We felt like we were going and doing things the way that we should. But what happened is along the way there just became challenges and obstacles and sometimes I, I told you guys that moving forward can sometimes feel like you're moving backwards but here's the thing the Holy Spirit is leading us in a way he knows what's in front you're, we're not going alone Jesus said in this world you're gonna have trouble we cannot let the trouble trouble us. Let not your heart be troubled. We cannot let the trouble consume our minds, cause us to surrender to fear. But when the trouble comes, we have to approach the trouble from a place of truth, from a place of light, from a place of love, from a place of understanding that there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God, from our sonship. And so Jesus, as as he steps into his ministry, he, he, he's being led by the Spirit right here. Afterward, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the lonely wilderness in order to reveal his strength against the accuser. Come on now. Watch this right here. Afterward, the Holy Spirit. I want you guys to see this. Afterward, the Holy Spirit. Okay. He leads Jesus into the wilderness in order to reveal his strength against the accuser. In order to reveal his strength. See, there's some situations that we go into and face that its job is to reveal the strength. To reveal, to expose the strength to show you what's been there the whole time to 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 grab to promote and to graduate i told you that the teacher sends the test not to fail you but to advance you the teacher sends the test not to fail you but to advance you when we see the trouble when we see the the obstacles it's not to 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 take us backward it's there to take us forward now god's not setting up this test Right in this world, there will be trouble. That the test is there, but the test is not there to beat us. The test is there to promote us, to advance us. Right, Goliath was a test, but that test took David from the from the hills and from from the from the from the uh, the shepherd fields into the palace. It took him into another level. It accelerated his growth. All of a sudden, he went from one stage to another stage, to a place where people recognize what God had him in him the whole time. See, a lot of times we, 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 we think that when we see problems and when we see trials and that when we see circumstances, that there's some type of curse, that there's some type of thing that's happening that, that you know, it's because you didn't do this or because you didn't do that. And the enemy will try to come in and bring condemnation. But sometimes God is just allowing the situation because 
It's our opportunity for growth and promotion. And so Jesus is here. It says afterward, the Holy Spirit led him into a lonely wilderness in order to reveal his strength. Reveal his strength. I'm telling you that God is trying to reveal some things in you. Right? And to you. And he says, by going through the ordeal of testing and after fasting for 40 days, Jesus was extremely weak and famished. Then the tempter came to entice him to provide food by doing a miracle so that he said to Jesus, how can you possibly be the son of God and go hungry? <laughs> oh my goodness. How can you possibly be the son of God? How can you possibly be okay with God? How can you possibly be loved by God and, and look at your situation? Look at your account. Look at your relationships. Look at the trouble and the mess that you're in. How can you possibly be a son? I told you that Jesus came this time to do what the first Adam failed in. The first Adam failed and struggled in his understanding of his sonship. Of his understanding that God had already put in him everything see the enemy tries to make us feel like what we need is from some external source that is outside of the father but everything that we need is already there god's already put it inside and this week i had to encourage uh my wife as as we were facing the challenge i said we're standing in the truth we're standing in light and we're standing in love we're, we're right where we need to be there's nothing uh, and I begin to see God was strengthened and send words from this person and words from this person to remind us of our identity, to remind us of our righteousness, to remind us that we're right where we need to be. But the enemy comes to challenge. How is it possible? How is it possible that you love God? How is it possible that he loves you? How is it possible? Look at your situation. And I love what Jesus says. He says here, just he answers says bread alone will not satisfy but true life is found in every word which constantly goes forth from God's mouth from every word that constantly goes forth from God's mouth I I love how this reads here every word that constantly in other words sometimes we get in a place where the devil tries to isolate and tell us that God's through He's done. He's not even trying to talk to you anymore. But Jesus says every word that constantly comes. In other words, he's continuing to speak. I love that God does not stop speaking. Uh, some people believe that, that when the book was closed, that God stopped speaking. God is still speaking. He's not speaking in disagreement to what he's already said. He's continuing to say what he said. He's reminding you and reminding you and reminding you. Of what he said, his promises that are yes and amen, that are in Christ Jesus. He does not stop. And I kept watching this week as God kept giving a word, another word, another word, another word. We found so much comfort this week from the words of God. God just kept giving another word, another scripture to encourage our heart. Another, another, like DJ Kali, another one, right? God just kept giving another word. What is that letting you tell? That he's continually on our side. That he's not shrinking back. That he's right there with us. Now, he says, Then the accuser transported Jesus to the city of Jerusalem and perched him at the highest point of the temple and said to him, If you're really God's son, if you're really God's son, jump and the angels will catch you. For it is written in the scriptures, he will command his angels to protect you and they will lift you up so that you won't even bruise your foot on a rock. And once again, Jesus said to him, you must never put the Lord God, your God to a test. And the third time the accuser lifted him up, uh, lifted Jesus up into a very high mountain range and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all the splendor that goes with it. He says, all these kingdoms I will give to you 
if you only will kneel down before me and worship me. But Jesus said, go away, enemy. For the scripture says, kneel before the Lord your God and worship only him. And at once the accuser left him and angels suddenly gathered around Jesus to minister to his needs. It comes, <laughs> sometimes it gets to the point where you're just tired of talking. You're tired of dealing with what the enemy is trying to bring. And you have to bring a halt to the conversation. An ending to what the enemy is trying to do. Jesus got to the point here. He said, look, there's nothing else for me to prove. I am his son. I am loved. I, in him, he is well pleased in me. <sighs> there gets a point where after you've done all that you can do you just stand you stand in the truth you stand in the light you stand in the love you stay in in in, in the grace that God has already poured out there's nothing else left to say now it's just believing to see the goodness of God in the land of the living we get to the point where now it's not, it's not anything else that the enemy could try to bring. I'm saturated in his love and I'm standing there. There's nothing else that, that you can throw at me. I, I, I know you can think of times where you've just been done. You know, I'm done with the drama. I'm done with the mess. And Jesus was like, I'm just done. I am who God has said I am. And we are who God has said we are. The Holy Spirit, one of his main jobs is to testify. It's to testify of, of who, whose we are. To tell, look, look, you're good. What's the evidence? What, prove it to me. Well, I, I moved on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit says. I don't go anywhere <laughs> that, 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 that I don't want to be. I don't, I don't live anywhere that I don't want to be. I don't dwell in unholy places. I have changed and transformed you. I've moved on the inside of you. God said, no longer distant, no longer separated. I've made my abode in you. Man, that's powerful. Jesus got to the place where he was done talking. And I'm, I'm, I'm inviting you to get to the place where you're done talking to the mess. Done allowing the trouble to trouble you done allowing the pressures of this world and all the things that the enemy tries to throw at. Look, if God be for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? God, God loves us so much. There's nothing that can separate us from his love. And one of the reasons why we must receive the Holy Spirit is so that he can begin to pour those things out in our heart to reveal truth to reveal light to reveal love i love it he said he was led by the spirit so that his strength could be revealed i'm telling you that the situation the storm that you're seeing right now is not there to beat you not there to defeat you it's there to promote you it's there to reveal just how glorious a work god has done in your life there's a song that says, I know I've been saved. I know I've been saved. I'm telling you that God is revealing his salvation right now in your life. He's showing the work that he is faithful to complete and to do. He's showing what only a true, uh, a true transformation, transformation can produce. He's showing himself faithful. Man, receive ye the word of the Lord. Receive his, his favor today. Receive his love today. Receive his acceptance today. The Holy Spirit is proof of that. He poured them out into our hearts. And go forth this week encouraged and inspired. Knowing that the trouble is not there to defeat you. But the trouble is there to advance you. We're going to pick this up next week. Father, we give you praise glory and honor thank you again for just pouring into us your love again showing us in your scriptures how much you love us how much you care for us 
I thank you that we are your sons, that we are your children, that we are heirs of you, joint heirs with Christ. And we receive all of it, every promise that you have, everything that you have for us, we receive it right now in Jesus' name. We thank you that, that, that all the accusations of the enemy, that we have an advocate that says something else. We have someone else on the other side, on the inside saying, nope, you are loved. Nope, you are cared for. Nope, you are protected. Nope, you are blessed. You are prosperous. You are, you are holy. You are set apart. You are mine. You are, you are, <laughs> oh, you are all right with me. I thank you. We receive that today. Continue to do the work that only you can do, Holy Spirit. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.